Hi, I'm Lee Labrada with Labrada Nutrition, and I'm here today with our Vice President of Marketing, Chad Jackson. Chad, glad you could join me today. Great to be here again, Lee. And we are going to talk about eating clean. So you hear you hear all these things about eating clean. You know, it's like, gosh, I got to eat cleaner in order to get into my best shape and, and, and that type of thing. But what is eating clean and, and how can you eat clean? Well, we're going to cover 10 things that you can do to start eating cleaner and getting into better shape. So let so, me ask you this, yeah. Lee, one of the things that, that comes up a lot, so you get a lot, of, there's so much information on the internet, right? Yeah. It's on, you hear it on flexible dieting, you hear it on if it fits in your macros. It's like, you know, what are what should I do from a macronutrient? Should it be a 40, 40, 20 or 40, 30, 30? You know, all of these kind of just, it's like, what do I do, right? And, and so I, I know today you're gonna go over these, these 10 rules, I think, that's probably gonna, clear up a lot of things right I think so I okay that's the uh, that's the that's that's the goal good good so good so one of the things that we talk about is you know we're hit so many times Lee with um, just all these kind of foods that are advertised or you know w w the fast food on the corner and all these kind of things and so how do we get you know how do we make decisions based on you know everything that's hit at us you know as far as processed foods and that kind of and, thing. and you know you're right it's like it, it seems like uh, you can't go five minutes watching TV without having a fast food commercial hurled at you you know it's uh, uh, there's processed foods everywhere in the grocery store and that type of thing but that kind of brings me to this you know really eating clean is about eating less processed foods and eating more whole foods you know naturally occurring foods you know so uh, instead of eating something that comes out of a box eating something that is uh, available fresh at the grocery store you know to, uh, like uh, chicken fish vegetables fruits and uh, you know and and things like this you know so the idea is to uh, get a lot of these chemicals and saturated fats and sugar and salt out of your diet you know and, and it, it's just uh, crazy how uh, you know how much your body responds to that you know, by uh, letting you get into better shape right agreed so, so, so let's t let's talk about a few things that, sure, that, sure. That, that we can do. These are some ideas uh, about some things that you can do in order to start eating cleaner. Okay, and certainly they're not all of the ideas, but they're some of the ideas. So number one, start replacing processed foods with less processed foods. You know, do away with the junk foods, you know, the things that come in packages, the baked goods, the candy, uh, those are obvious. You know, but, uh, you know, uh, things that are not so uh, obvious, things that come in, in boxes and cans and things like that. Try to do away with uh, as much of that as you can and eat less processed foods. You know, again, go, uh, you, you know, one easy way of doing it is to shop along the perimeter of the grocery store. Now, stop and think about that for a second. The perimeter of the grocery store is where you find the vegetables, the fruits, the meats, mm -hmm. the dairy, you know, the fresh dairy and, and all of those things that are, are good for you. You know, and it seems to be like in the center of the grocery store that you find all of the processed foods, the chips, the sodas, the can, the boxed stuff, you know, all the junky stuff. So that's that's number one, you know, replace the uh, the processed foods and the junk foods uh, with naturally occurring unproce uh, unprocessed foods. Uh, rule number two, cut down on sugar and cut down on simple carbohydrates. You know, start reading labels. Look on the back of, of labels of products and you'll see how much carbohydrates it contains. And in fact, we did a really nice segment on carbohydrates yeah, not, we not, did. not too long ago mm -hmm. uh, and, and which ones are good and which ones are bad. But you want to also cut down on those foods that have high sugar content. Now, it's not always obvious, guys, because, you know, the things like the uh, baked goods, you know, the cakes, the cookies, those things those are pretty obvious right but what's not so obvious to the average consumer is that things that a lot of people think are good for you like fruit juice for instance really are not you know fruit juice is very high in sugar a lot of times as high as sodas you know uh, uh, pop and sodas and things like that so you really have to you really have to read labels another one, another one is uh, almond milk yeah you know, exactly. I mean, how, how many people pour almond milk on their cereal, you know, in the morning, you know, and thinking that they're doing something good for themselves. But if you look at the, uh, the uh, uh, ingredients panel on almond milk, it's, it's got a lot of sugar, guys. So watch, watch out for that. Now, here's another thing that you can do. Here's, uh, here's tip number three, and that is to cut down on saturated fats and trans fats. Let's talk about the saturated fats first. And we did a nice segment on, on fats 
uh, not too long ago. We did, and that's on YouTube, by the way, guys, if you, you wanted to kind of get a more detailed version of the fat piece that, that Lee did. Right, saturated versus unsaturated right. fats and that type of thing. I'm not going to get into that right now, but I will tell you that saturated fats are, are contained in heavy cuts of meat like pork, bacon, ham. It's contained in things like mayonnaise. It's contained in things uh, uh, you know, that are heavy in, in oil and, and processed foods and, and whatnot. And uh, the uh, trans fats are probably even worse. We mm -hmm. talked about that as well. But just a reminder, trans fats are those uh, fats uh, typically that are generated whenever you heat up uh, 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 oil, like during a frying process. Mm -hmm. You know, so French fries and chips, guys, terrible choice. They're high in trans fats, and trans fats are carcinogenic. So we want to cut down on those types of foods. We want to increase the intake of foods that have unsaturated fats, okay? So those, those would be foods such as olive oil, coconut oil, and even fish oil. Mm -hmm. You know, if you don't like fish oil, you can eat salmon, uh, sardines. You know, we, I have a friend who likes sardines. Right. <laughs> so it just depends, uh, depends on the person. You know, um, okay, and then here's, here's uh, tip number four. You know, know what to buy organic. You know, you hear a lot about organic. You do, you do. Most, a lot of stores seems like provide a lot of organic uh, foods now. Organic produce yeah. and that type of thing. And I think it's a great thing, you know, to eat organic so that you don't have all the pesticides and all the, you know, the chemicals and things added to the fruit. But uh, where it really, it really makes a difference is in those types of fruits and vegetables that don't have skin. You know, so in other words, strawberries, um, lettuce, mm -hmm. you know, those type of things, you're better off buying organic. Things that have a peel on them, like oranges, uh, you, know, um, uh, uh, you know, bananas, even apples where you can cut the peel off or just peel the peel away, you know, that typically uh, gets rid of uh, the, uh, the, the pesticide for the, for the most part. So not so important that you get organic there. So this next one, Lee, this is one that's interesting because I, I get to see you, uh, you know, every day right and I get to see you in the lunchroom and one of the things that we're going to talk about next is you know making your own meals right right and every day you're coming with you know your own meal that you've you've uh, you, you've brought right from home and, and it's interesting and and so I want to kind of hear about you know your thoughts on that you know should we bring our own meals should we you know just eat better at maybe a fast food joint you know what are, what are the things how is this going to help us you know sure for, with health that that is one of the, the the best tips that I can share with you guys is to cook and plan your own meals. Listen, guys, I know that we're all pressed for time, so a lot of times it's easier to go eat at a restaurant, you know, and that type of thing, you know, but um, it, when, when it's possible, you should try to cook meals at home. That way you can select the ingredients, okay, and you know exactly what goes into that dish. You know, there's a big difference between getting a chicken breast at a grocery store, going home, and then grilling that chicken breast and knowing exactly how much oil you put on it, if you put any oil on it at all or, or whatnot, you know, versus going to a restaurant where that chicken breast might be marinated in a butter oil sauce or might even be injected, you know, with those types of things to make it uh, a, a little bit, uh, you know, more moist, you know. So when possible, cook at home. We've got a great section on how to cook at home and how to plan those meals meals in my book called The Lean Body Promise, which you can get on the labrado.com website. And you can also get all sorts of diets, uh, recipe, uh, diet tips, I'm sorry, recipes, uh, nutritional information, even videos on these things free on labrado.com. So I would encourage you guys to, uh, to check it out there. Yeah, and I want to share this one with you. Uh, actually, Lee practices what he preaches because it was interesting. We, uh, we had a meeting, uh, it was Tuesday and uh, brought in lunch uh, from a place, a uh, Mexican food restaurant actually, and everybody ate Mexican food. Lee ate his, his salmon and his vegetable and his, I think his salad and things like that. And so he practices exactly what he preaches, which is, which is awesome around here. So. Well, thank you very much. I, tried to, I definitely try to do that. And there are gonna be times where you're at the Mexican restaurant because you're in a social setting right. and you have to order. And then, so what you do is you just order things that are lower in fat. You know, you just tell the waiter that you want the chicken chicken breast fajitas, you know, but you want them cooked and grilled without oil. You get the corn tortillas instead of the flour tortillas, mm -hmm. which are typically higher in fat. And just those kind of things. You use pico de gallo instead of the guacamole. You know, and you learn how to do these, uh, these, uh, these little shortcuts and right. things that are helpful for uh, eating uh, when you have to eat out. The next tip that we're gonna talk about is about eating lean proteins along with complex carbohydrates and uh, vegetables. And I'm gonna start talking a little bit about the uh, uh, lean proteins and you know what do you think when you think of a lean protein 
I think steak, chicken, those kind of things. Right, you know? yeah. right. So, uh, you know, uh, the, the obvious is you stay away from pork, you right. stay away from bacon, you stay away from ham, you know, fatty cuts of meat, you know, um, uh, you, you know, and, and, th and things that are, I mean, obviously cooked foods, you know, that, uh, that have heavy cuts of meat and stuff like that. Okay, so you want to stay away from those. I like to eat chicken breast, mm -hmm. and I like to eat um, I like to eat lean meat, that type of thing. But did you know that, for instance, because everybody thinks chicken is great? Well, really, you have to take a hard look at it. Did you know that if you were to eat the drumstick, the leg on a chicken with the skin, okay, you are getting as much fat as you get in some cuts of beef. You could have had a steak. I'll take the steak. Then. Right, I'll take the steak. <laughs> right, me too. I'll take the steak. You know, so you have to be conscious of these things. You know, so chicken breast, you know, is great when it's prepared uh, without oil or butter. When it's grilled, you know, it's great. You know, uh, so a lean protein like chicken or fish, these guys are fantastic. You know, when you're in a pinch, this is our lean body ready to drink shake. 40 grams of protein, zero sugar, tastes absolutely awesome. It's got a lot of good things in there for you, like probiotics, prebiotics, you know, and, and whatnot. And so th this is this is really just a, an excellent product when you're in a pinch. And I think this is the new flavor too, right? Tilly? This is this is Cafe the new mocha. flavor, yes sir. Can't gloss over that. This is the <laughs> Cafe Mocha. Yes, this is our newest flavor. And man, I'll tell you what, that tastes like as good as any any uh, latte that you get in a uh, fancy coffee house and, and I am a big fan of Starbucks and I'll tell you I, I just love the taste of this product. I know we had them last week and just amazing so we're excited for that kickoff for, uh, for us to be able to introduce that. So. Yes sir. So okay we talked about uh, protein now let's talk a little bit about complex carbohydrates. So complex carbohydrates are those types of carbohydrates that break down slowly over a period of time you know all carbohydrates break down into blood sugar but some break down fat faster than others. Complex carbohydrates break down slowly so they don't abruptly raise your insulin and stop the fat burning process. So we want to stick with complex carbohydrates such as yams, you know, rice and beans uh, mixed together, oatmeal. These are just some examples. And then the last thing is that you want to uh, include uh, some vegetables so that uh, it helps with the uh, digestion. It slows down the absorption of the meal. You know, it improves the glycemic index, the rate at which that meal is broken down. So, you know, you just, uh, it's just a lot better for you. Now here's something that I want to show you real quick. You know, so this is just kind of this is one of those hacks that uh, that that I, I typically like to just kind of keep in mind. Let's say that you're going to eat at home or you're going to eat at a restaurant. You know, typically what I like to do is to divide that plate into thirds. Okay, you know, and on this side of the plate, I'll just put a, I'll fill this third of the plate with a portion of protein. Protein, right? Okay, and then I'll, I'll fill this portion of the plate. I think I got that right. Or did I do that upside down? I did it upside down. Sorry, guys. But that's the carbohydrate. And then this portion of the plate, you know, with a salad or a vegetable. Okay, vegetable or salad. So one third vegetable salad, one third protein, one third carbohydrate. Okay, that's an easy way to remember how to set up a excellent meal, something that's really, really good for you. So that's uh, that's something to keep in mind. And that's the other thing too, Lee, you know, people that say, oh, I don't like vegetables or whatever else, you know, it's gonna keep you fuller also, right? It does keep you fuller. And you know, so when you're dieting and you're trying to get off those extra pounds, it really makes a big difference you know, to uh, to get those vegetables in there because it satiates you. It uh, it delays gastric emptying. You know, so just a fancy word for me. The food stays in your stomach longer, mm -hmm. so you stay fuller longer, and you feel better. You know, another thing that makes you uh, 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 you know uh, fuller and satiates your appetite is water. Hmm. I mean, just simply drinking enough water. You know, and that's another one of those tips that I want to share with you. You know, so drinking enough water, and I, I like to drink like uh, at least two cups of water at every meal. Typically, I'll drink it after the meal. You know, to allow the <coughs> digestive process to start. Okay, got it. And how many in ounces do you think a day? A lot of people ask me, you know, well, how much water should I take? You know, you see these big bodybuilders, they have these big jugs around, or you know, what should what should I drink as far as ounces are concerned? I think the two cups is a is a great rule. You know, during your meal, that kind of thing. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, it, what what are your thoughts? Is it you know? 50 percent of your weight you know, I think I, 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 you know, I think 50, 50 I think uh, I think half to two-thirds of your weight okay, okay in so ounces yeah in ounces okay, yeah so let's it. yeah obviously not yeah not, not, pound, not pounds <laughs> of water boy that'd be, that's right that'd be too much yeah. <laughs> so uh, what we're looking at is uh, let's say that I weigh 170 pounds right you know we would uh, I would like to take uh, in at least uh, 85 to 100 ounces of water in a day got it okay you know and so that kind of puts me right there at about uh, 12 eight ounce cups okay got yeah it. and that's 
going to keep you full or hydrated. Also yep. More energetic. More the energetic day too, right? for sure. Hey, yeah. listen, if water's water's essential for muscles. Mm -hmm. You know, we're interested in in, uh, in nourishing those muscles. You know, but a lot of times people overlook one of the cheapest nutrients, and that is water. And it's essential for life, but it's mm -hmm. also essential for keeping those muscles nice and full, which enables you to get a great pump in the gym. You know, and mm -hmm. and uh, get all the uh, toxic products out of your body and and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Speaking of toxic products, this next tip. You want to avoid foods that are high in chemicals mm -hmm. and, and added preservatives and stuff like that. So again, if you eat naturally, you know, you're going to be uh, ahead of the ballgame. It's typically the processed foods, the, the uh, foods that occur in, uh, in packaging and that type of thing that have a lot of chemicals on it. If you can't pronounce the chemicals, it's probably not good for you. <laughs> That's true, right? exactly. Now, one of the other things that people ask sometimes, and I've, I've gotten this question, you know, what do I do about alcohol? You know, I like to have a glass of wine, or mm -hmm. maybe I even like to, you know, be excessive on the weekends. What, what are your thoughts on alcohol? You know, I think that I think that uh, uh, in moderation, it's okay. If you're talking about having a glass of, or two of wine every week or something like that, you know, uh, I think that's okay. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're talking about about, about uh, a six pack every night, that's not okay. You know, that's uh, uh, that's a problem. Right. Alcohol's got a lot of calories, so it can make you fat. You know, and, you, and I'll tell you what, no, look no further than guys that have these big pot bellies, you know, from drinking too much beer or drinking too much alcohol. You know, not to mention that that type of thing can make you insulin resistant, mm -hmm. you know, and, uh, and it leads to problems like alcoholism and that type of thing. But assuming that you're nowhere near that extreme, you got to realize that alcohol is a poison, and so your body has to deal with it in that manner, you know. Uh, so you, you have to... Uh, uh, it has to, you know, flush that out, you know, and so I think it strains the system. You probably want to keep it moderate if you're going to use alcohol. Okay, yep. got it. So if we stick with these rules that you kind of went through, Lee, I mean, what what kind of results would we get? I mean, well, I'll tell you what, I know I covered a lot of ground here and these are a lot of, these are a lot of things to keep in mind. So, you know, if, 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 uh, if you want to go back and replay the video and, you know, and uh, slow it down and you can kind of absorb it, you can also get a lot of these points. Uh, in, in, in my book, The Lean Body Promise, and also on the Labrada website for free. Just go check it out. We got tons of educational material there that you can benefit from. I would encourage you to sign up for our newsletter. We send out a free weekly newsletter, a men's newsletter, a women's newsletter. It's fabulous. Every week that you get everything from articles to videos to recipes, motivation, uh, you name it, it's in there. And so I would encourage you to, to, uh, to do that. In terms of results, when all of these principles are put into place and all of these these nutritional principles align with your exercise program, you're going to see incredible changes in your body. You know, it takes it takes some work and it takes some planning, but I think it's well worth the effort. Okay, great. Thanks, Lee. Yeah. I really appreciate you sharing this with me Absolutely. personally and also our audience. Absolutely. It's great to, great to share this time with you guys. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to share it with your friends. And I am Lee Labrada with Chad Jackson for Labrada Nutrition. We will see you next time. Hi, Lee Labrada here with Labrada Nutrition. If you enjoyed this video, make sure that you click here to subscribe so you can get more videos on training, nutrition, motivation that will help you get into your best shape ever.